Howdy. As some of you know, I really don't watch television. Uh, about the only time I do is when we go to bed at night. I'll often turn something on just for background noise. Otherwise, I have a hell of a time falling asleep. And so I will most often put on documentaries and they can range from anything. Um, in fact, the more boring, the better, because the idea is I'm supposed to be going to sleep. But once in a while, there's a documentary, and I say once in a while, it happens quite often, that I wind up so interested in that I have to watch it. Well, I would say that if you call yourself a prepper, if you call yourself a Christian or a follower of Yah, follower of God, follower of Allah, I don't care what, what name you give them, it's the same, same God, then you may find this to be particularly interesting. You don't find a whole lot of people talking truth on these particular subjects. And this documentary covers both. So the name of it is Ancient Origins, uh, Kingdoms Under Ice. And I'll leave a link to the, um, to the video on Amazon Prime down in the description so you can watch it at your leisure. If for whatever reason you can't watch it on Amazon, you don't have an Amazon Prime account, whatever the case may be, but you really want to see it, uh, let me know and uh, we can figure something out, wink, wink. So anyway, I've got two video clips from the documentary that I wanted to share with you, starting with this one here. It's a minute, 46 seconds. It's going to talk a little bit about something that I touch upon once in a while, and I should probably do a real big deep dive. And uh, there's even some other YouTubers that, uh, well, I'm not a YouTuber, but there are some YouTubers that will once in a while bring up Enoch, but they really don't know their butts from a hole in the ground uh, on a lot of the scripture, to be honest. They, they take the Pharisee approach at scripture, okay? If you're acting like a Pharisee, you're doing it wrong. You know what I mean, Vern? I know what I mean. So we're not Pharisees. Well. <laughs> so anyway, without having the information that can be garnered from the book of Enoch, it is completely impossible to have any idea on what has happened in the past, what is happening right now, and what we can expect in the future. Without Enoch being in the picture there, there is no way to figure that out. There's just too much missing information. But I'm going to shut my trap. I'm going to let you hear what they have to say about the book of Enoch. Now remember, there are a whole lot of people out there that tell you, oh, well, those aren't true books. That's why they were removed. Who removed them? That's the first question you need to ask. And then after you answer who removed those books, who decided what was God's word and what wasn't, ask yourself who it was that uh, were complicit in our Messiah's death. Okay, because you're going to find out that the two groups of individuals that were complicit in our Messiah's death are not only the same two groups of individuals that rule the religion world today, but also the ones that are telling you what's good and what's bad. Great deception, anyone? I've been laying it out. I can't lay it out anymore. I really can't lay it out anymore. It should be very obvious. If you're not seeing it at this point, you have to be willfully denying it. And that is willfully denying the Father and His only begotten Son. So, choose your teams wisely. Some of them aren't what they're made to appear. Let's hear what they got to say about Enoch in the documentary. The book of Enoch was written around the time of Genesis, with the text found in Ethiopia, as well as parts of translated versions among the Dead Sea Scrolls. Enoch describes hallucinatory visions of fallen angels, giants, epic heavenly battles, and more. He was the great-grandfather of Noah and was described as the seventh from Adam. One of the books within is called The Book of the Watchers, the word watchers translates to Sumerians. 
The Book of Enoch was supposed to be a warning regarding the Sumerians. Because of its controversial teachings, the Book of Enoch became discredited by the Jews and the powers of Rome. This is a drama hmm. about good and evil. A tale told that lustful fallen angels descended upon earth and went on to have children with the daughters of men. The offspring became evil giants with insatiable appetites that devoured all food from animals to eventually humans. God's almighty archangels appealed to the cries of man and were sent to clean house through a heavenly and earthly war. The destructive giants were then wiped away by the great flood sent by God. But were they wiped away? According to law, watchers were not at all destroyed, but were separated throughout the world and continue to this day to haunt mankind. The book goes on to foretell a prophecy about the return of the evil and the proposed final judgment of the fallen angels. The Nephilim, translated as giants or titans, are the sons of God formed by a union of daughters of man, according to the Bible in Genesis 6-4. This is a very similar account as in the Book of Enoch, but the Book of Enoch is written with greater detail. So there you go. Um, and there is a lot of detail to be had from the Book of Enoch. If you don't have or have not read the Apocrypha, then I can't advise you anymore to read it. You are missing, without, without reading and, and awareness of the Apocrypha, you are basically missing some of the most important parts to help prepare you for what is coming. That's not by accident. None of this is by accident. None of it. They, they did all of this on purpose to confuse people, to drive people away from the Father, and, uh, and basically to just give evil its free reign on the world because what's going to stop it when everybody thinks that they're on the good team, right? You make everybody think that they're on the good team and you can get them to do anything that you please. So all you got to do is convince them that they are somehow on the good team, right? And I won't say morally right or anything like that because, see, morals are something that we have to decide upon for ourselves. Now, if you know, we may have totally different morals. Like, you, I'm sure that you've heard the saying millions of times about uh, it's better to ask for forgiveness than to ask for permission. Yeah, BS, BS. Now, there are a whole lot of people that will live by that mindset. Don't pull that crap on me. Do not pull that attitude on me because I will do everything I can to take away anything that you gained from doing that. You don't just force yourself or your will or your agendas on other people because you know what's better for them or you feel like you are more deserving of whatever it is than they are. That's a bunch of self-entitled, self-worshipping crap is what that is. Absolutely. You don't do that. Ask first. And if the answer is no, then guess what? You got to figure out another way. There used to be a point in time where people understood that. When people understood what no meant. People understood what stop meant. Now... People just do whatever the hell they want. And then they blame the very person that they're whatever negatively affecting for being the cause of it. It's mind-blowing. Anyway, totally different subject. <laughs> but let's go on to the next video. This here is going to tell you about a little bit about the future. What's to expect and what's happened multiple times before. Interesting, right? I thought so. Why is it, for all of their precise alignments and advanced building designs and techniques, that so many of the world's ancient sites fail to align with true north? Might the answer be that at one point in time they did? Might it be the locations of the poles has changed over the course of history? One of the first people to suggest this was researcher Charles Hapgood. 
who put forward that there had likely been several pole shifts going back over a hundred thousand years, and quite probably more before that. This was, he would differ, why animal carcasses had been discovered in Antarctica with unchewed, preserved food in their mouths. They had essentially been flash frozen as the continent had literally shifted from nearer the equator to the bottom far reaches of the planet, in relatively speaking, an instant. This also resulted in a change of location for the pole in the north, which Hapgood further suggested had resided in several different locations during the course of prehistory. Researcher and scientist Mark Colotto would build upon Hapgood's research during his own work, examining many of the ancient megalithic sites, and his ultimate realization that a great many of them failed to align with the North Pole. This went, as we have mentioned, against every aspect of their design, planning, and construction. Colotto returned to the theory put forward by Hapgood that the North Pole had shifted on at least three previous occasions in the last 100,000 years. This meant that the North Pole had been in three very different locations on the planet, and Carlotto began to suspect that these former locations would match these ancient sites exactly. When he projected directly north from these ancient buildings... Now hang on. How many times have you heard me say that the sites of the Great Pyramids, I'm not talking all the pyramids, I mean the Great Pyramids, on the sites of all of the Great Pyramids, in which there are four sets of them around the Earth, is where you're going to find the North Pole. I think that they are markers for the North Pole. So, and as I go on to explain it, You'll also hear them, uh, and, and they don't just come right out and say it, but just kind of listen to the print for the premise of it, that the Earth shifts 90 degrees, not 180, okay? 90 degrees. And that's one thing I'm really, I really got to tip my hat to, to Ben Davidson, and I really have to sit there and tell you that the man knows what he's talking about. He is the only one that I know of, the only one besides myself to have figured out the whole 90 degree thing, right? Because most people think that it's going to be a 180 degree shift. It's not. It's going to be 90 degrees. There's four sets of great pyramids on the earth, 90 degrees apart. That is where each and every North Pole is when it's time for that particular cycle. Anyway, continuing on. He found that was very much the case. For example, when he did this with the pyramids at Teotihuacan in Mexico, he arrived at a point where Hapgood had suggested the North Pole had been around 10,000 BC, Hudson Bay. This meant that if the pyramids at Teotihuacan had meant to have been aligned with the true north, which they almost certainly were, then the only time this was possible was 12,000 years ago, meaning the site is much older than mainstream history currently accepts. Around 50,000 years ago, at least according to Hapgood's research, the North Pole had been in what we know as Greenland today. Amazingly, several ancient sites true north align exactly with this location, meaning they would be at least 50,000 years old. These sites include the Temple of Jupiter at Baalbek in Lebanon, the Western Wall in Jerusalem, and the Parthenon in Athens in Greece. Even more remarkable when Colotto projected true north of the six monoliths of Alanta Tambo in Peru, he arrived at a point at the Bering Sea that Hapgood claimed had been the location of the North Pole a staggering 100,000 years ago. These ruins are some of the best preserved in the entire Inca Empire, and if these projections are accurate, they would be tens of thousands of years older than official view state. Of course, if there was any accuracy to these assertions, and there is every reason to think there is, then it pushes back the timeline of human civilizations by tens of thousands of years, perhaps even longer. Might it be that these colossal megalithic sites, some of which appear to go back as far as 100,000 years, are signs of a one-time global civilization? 
Perhaps many civilizations have come and gone from our world, leaving behind only the original stone ruins that have been commandeered and built upon by subsequent unknown civilizations until we arrive in recorded history. So, and I wanted to bring up another point that I, I have talked about on, on way more than one occasion. And that is, I have mentioned the idea anyway, that the, I uh, had to check to make sure my camera was good over there, um, that like the iron ore deposits and stuff like that, that we come across, I think they are previous cities. Plain and simple. I think they are pre prior cities that have completely disintegrated down to nothing, back down to their roots, <laughs> figuratively, literally, whatever you want to say. And I think that's how we find all of these deposits in the ground, like your iron ore and all that, is I think they were cities. That's the old cities, and that's what became of all of the stuff that those cities were built out of. This technology that we have, our awesome computers and all that stuff that we have, it, it's not new. Well, how can you say that, Mike? They were cavemen uh, because the Bible says that there is nothing new under the sun. What is, is what was and what will be again. Plain and simple. You can't sit there and act like Everybody in, in the past, meaning prior civilizations, were all prehistoric cavemen and cavewomen. That's a bunch of bunk. That's a massive, massive bunch of bunk. There's one very important thing that human beings need to remember. That the reality of the universe is not in any way shaped or formed by what people see it as, okay? The real, reality of the universe is unbounding. We can't even imagine it, we can't even see it, why? Because we cannot, there's no way for us to educate ourselves on a level to be able to understand it all. We can't even educate ourselves on the level to be able to understand every single thing about one subject, no less all of them. You know what I mean? So that's why I think it's important that we pay close attention to the user manual for people. And instead of just taking people's word for what it says, I want to do the deep dive. I can tell you this stuff, but I don't expect anybody to take anything I say and just put it with truth. I don't want you to. I want you to weigh everything I tell you. At the same time, I want you to weigh everything other people tell you too. And I also want, and this is the big one, that when other people don't tell you the truth, don't provide you the facts, that you stop getting information from them. That's critically important. Because one day you may be drawing upon that information that you've heard before and you might more remember the incorrect story than what you remember the correct story and then where does that leave you trash in trash out don't let the trash in it's that simple anyway hope you learned something about enoch hope you learned something about pull shift and i hope to see you later on for the live show have a great day shalom